every time I post one of my awesome shit you can do with Git videos, I get a lot of questions about why does your terminal look like this? What are these tools you are using? Where are these icons coming from? Why can we not have the same prompt? And all sorts of questions like that. In this video, I'm gonna show you some of the tools that I love to use on a day-to-day -day basis, how you can install them on your own machines, and how you can configure some of your dot .files to your liking. Obviously, these steps will vary between different Linux distributions. In this video, I'm going to be using Ubuntu for simplicity. You can pretty much do the same on Mac OS, or if you are using a Windows subsystem, they could work as well. Make sure you check the description for the installation guides of each of these tools so that you can get the specific instructions belonging to your environment and your operating system. Now that you know what we're going to be talking about, let's get started. To make sure we have a fresh, clean start, I'm going to be running everything in a Docker container. Obviously, you're not going to do the same because you will be running these directly on your environment. But uh, for my sake, I already have configured my environment and I really don't want to mess it up. So let's first make sure that our Docker container is up and running. I'm going to show you very quickly how it looks like. This is the Docker file. It's running Ubuntu 24.04. And I'm going to install some basic tools which are common for any development environment. I'm going to be setting up a uh, custom user. And that's pretty much it, right? Um, this is a vanilla uh, Docker file. Uh, next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be building this Docker file. And here I'm using make. You will not probably use make you most likely will be calling something like this but again this is not a docker tutorial so docker build i'm just simply building the image that i'm going to be running in a, a second if you are familiar with all of these things just feel free to skip to the chapter where i start the configuration as opposed to waiting for this part to finish now that our image build is done, what we can do is run the container. So a Docker image list, and you can see I already have it over here. It's called toolbox. And then what we can do is uh, docker run dash ti for interactive uh, toolbox latest. And then we're going to be running bin sh or bash, whatever you prefer. Now, this is our default shell. This is a super vanilla. There's not even an alias for LL. Uh, this is a super vanilla environment. Obviously, it doesn't have anything installed on it. And the first thing we're going to be doing is installing my favorite shell, which is called Fish. Now, a lot of you are familiar with Bash. Maybe some of you have already been using ZSH. All of these are great options. I personally prefer Fish for five reasons. So instead of talking about the features I like, let's set up Fish and I will show you the things that I love about it. All right, first things first, uh, in Ubuntu, we need to add a custom repository. So we're going to add this one called fish shell uh, release dash three. So we make sure we get the latest. Once this is done, we're gonna run update, sudo apt update. And then the last thing we're gonna do is sudo apt install fish. That's it. This is how we're gonna get the latest version. Now let's check where fish got installed. It's been moved to my user bin folder. The next thing I would like to do is to make sure that a fish is actually my default shell or the default shell for the user I have set up, which is called glitch. The way you would figure out your username is you can say, who am I? And it will tell you which user you are currently logged into. Now that fish has been set up as my default shell, one small thing of homekeeping I need to do. You don't necessarily need to do that yourself is to set up a password for my user. Let me do that very quickly. Uh, if you do this on your environment, you're changing your current user's password. So just be careful with the commands that you are running. I need to do this here because it's a fresh environment, but most likely you won't need to do that on your end. Now that we have our environment set up, we can actually log in as our user glitch and as you can see here already that the prompt has changed and you can see that now we are running the fish shell now you need to be careful with fish because fish is not compatible with bash so if you have bash scripts that are in your environment you rely heavily on bash scripting you cannot run these in the fish shell they're not compatible fish has a new uh, completely different shell scripting language which is way more user friendly than bash 
However, if you write fish scripts, they are only compatible also on environments running the fish shell, right? So changing your shell is a big step. Uh, it comes with a lot of uh, positives and negatives, so you have to be very careful with the choice of the shell you would like to have. I personally love fish for five reasons, which I'm going to show you right now. However, if you are working a lot in environments that require you to have compatibility with Bash, ZSH might be a better option. Uh, but it will not have the same features as fish, especially these ones. Now, the first awesome feature of fish is obviously the syntax highlighting. So if I type in any command, you can see already that it's being colored with the stuff I want and I need. You can see also the different colors whenever I, you know, list a list of my directories. Uh, these are not available by default with bash. Um, and the second thing I love most about fish is the uh, auto suggestion. So besides syntax highlighting, auto-suggestion with fish is so, so powerful because it auto-suggests command from commands from your history. And in my opinion, this is a major, major productivity booster. Why? Let's, let me show you a small example. Let's say yesterday you did echo hi, and then uh, you dropped this in a file in your home directory. You called it home.txt, right? Now, let's say the next morning you want to recall what uh, command you ran yesterday but only you can only remember the echo part so you can type in echo and you can see already that it's suggesting suggesting the command uh, that i just ran the nice thing also about it is whenever you type in a certain keyword you can search the history from that starting point so for example if i have another uh hello command right now that i'm pushing it to a yet another file, home2.txt. Both of them start with echo. But if I type echo and I press up, it will show me all of the commands after this point. And this applies to pretty much any cutoff point in your command, which in my opinion is super, super helpful, especially if you have a lot of complicated stuff you're doing in, the, in your terminal. This is such a productivity booster in my opinion and I have not been able to see something similar to this in other shells and honestly this is the main feature that keeps keeps me coming back to fish it's just brilliant uh, your history is kept for a really long time you can customize that of course and if you keep a pretty lengthy history fish does a pretty pretty nice job at it now obviously a lot of people will say oh but you can press command r and you can pretty much get uh you know search uh, functionality this is also enhanced in fish it gives you a lot, a much, much nicer uh, searching uh, capability, you know, back search or history search. Uh, and some people will say, oh, but you can use FZ, FZF. Um, you don't have to install anything else with Fish. That's, that's great. It just has a lot of nice features that come off the shelf. Now, the next tool I immediately install when I am running a new environment is a tool called EXA or EXA, whatever you want to call it. This one is a uh, improvement or a um, sort of a better version, more modern version of LS. It does pretty much the same job, uh, but it's just much more, much more improved. Let me show you how you can actually install it. It's available immediately in Ubuntu's uh, package registry. So you can just say sudo apt install exa and you are done. Now, obviously nobody wants to run exa type in exa. You already have muscle memory for LLL or LS or whatever it is, right? So let's create some fish aliases that will allow us to run exa as if we are running LS. Um, and the way we will do that with fish is by, do I have them installed? Yes, I do. All right. So the way we would do that with, uh, with fish is by opening the .config folder, fish config. You see how the auto completion works with fish. It's just, it's just brilliant. And this is not auto completion from history. It's auto suggestion based on the folder or file path, uh, which is brilliant. So let us go to the end of this file and let us add the following. So if type uh, dash Q, if type will basically check uh, the type of the command uh, that we are triggering, whether it's a built-in utility, it's an alias, or it's an, a third-party executable. Uh, that's what we want to do here, just to make sure that exa is uh, available for us to use. And then what we can do is specify an alias, ll, um, an exa-la-g, and then specify icons, 
and that's pretty much it. Now we can save and close this file and type in source.config fish-config.fish. And there we go. Now we have replaced LL with exa. And as you can see here, the output is much more refined. It shows me the hidden files and it shows me nice little icons based on the file type that I have in this list. It can also, do, it does also color coding for me, which in my opinion is just so much, so much nicer. What I love about EXA as well is that it replaces tree. Uh, it's not currently installed, but let's, we can do the following for example, and it will show me the entire folder uh, as well as the, uh, you know, nested folders up to a certain level that I specify over here. You can specify whatever level you want. EXA is a pretty cool modern, uh, tool that I always install on new environments that I use. The next step is customizing our prompt. And now here you will have two options. Obviously Fish has its own small package manager, which you can uh, install so that you can configure uh, whichever prompt you want. And the other option is to use something called Starship, which is a small executable that we need to install separately, third party, and it allows for different types of configurations. It gives you a little bit more control and it allows you to customize your prompt as well as other stuff via a TOML file. Starship is written in Rust and it can be configurable a little bit more than what the standard fish shells uh, can provide, but there's no right or wrong with this. It's just a matter of preference. It's up to you. I'm gonna show you right now how to install Starship. And next, I'm gonna show you also how to use the Fisher, which is Fish's package manager. Installing Starship is pretty simple. Never call scripts or do installations like this from places you do not trust. This is a high risk setup. Because also we are running it as sudo, but we trust Starship. So we're gonna do it like this. What I would normally do is I would open this uh, file in a browser. I would go through it, make sure there's nothing really fishy or weird in it before I execute the command. I've done this before. So now I'm just, just going to run it. Starship has been installed. All I need to do as the last step is to add this in my you know, config.sh or config.fish uh, file, sorry. So we're gonna op copy this. We're gonna open Vim once more and you see the auto completion, how awesome it is. And then we're just gonna paste this and we are going to type in source. And as you can see here, my prompt has entirely changed. Obviously this is the default uh, prompt that comes with uh, Starship. It just works out of the box. You can keep it like this, it's totally fine. If you don't like this, we can also customize it. The way we're gonna customize it is by going to my config folder, and then I'm going to create a file called starship.toml. And here you can go in many different directions. There's obviously a huge list of configurations on the Starship website that you can go through. I'm gonna show you right now how you can configure your prompt. So you can go either the crazy route, which is what I'm gonna do right now. Like this is a super crazy configuration for a prompt. Um, once you save it, it automatically gets reflected. And as you can see here, my prompt has changed into these weird arrow thingies. And if I go to different directories, they will have different uh, values and it will show me here the path. And this is an area where you can customize also certain stuff. You can add the time, you can add the time it took for the execution of a certain command. There are so many, so many other options and configurations here, but uh, I don't like this at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to empty my uh, Starship configuration file. Uh, sorry, it's dot config starship.toml. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to inject or paste my own personal preferred configuration. And uh, I'm going to make this available for you as a uh, gist in the description below so that you can copy and paste this as is. Obviously I have enabled, uh, you know, the AWS stuff. I am providing the time. I am adding some of the Git things that will tell me like whether there are some conflicts, untracked files, stashed. You can obviously change these icons. There's UTF-8 support, maybe even UTF-8 16, depending on your environment. So you can have a lot of nice emojis. We're gonna save this file. And now, as you can see, my prompt has uh, changed. To fully appreciate uh, the niceness of this prompt, I'm going to clone one of my uh, Git repositories just to show you how it looks like whenever you are operating within a, um, a repository. Let's do that for 
this one. So let's go to my home directory, git clone, and then I'm gonna paste this. And then I'm going to go into my uh, start search repository. You can see here, it will tell me which branch I am on and which version of the package I have currently, or what is my latest tag. And it will also show me the text tag that I'm using here. It's Node.js in this particular case. This can also apply to pretty much other packages, other types of technology stacks as well. This is very uh, handy for me and I love using it this way. You can see also how Exa does a nice job with the icons, right? Uh, next to each folder and next to each file. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is the alternative to Starship, which is using Fisher. We're gonna go to the repository and grab the installation link. Fisher is written with a bunch of fish scripts, so it's pretty native. You don't need to install anything external. And that's pretty much it. Once you run this, you can install any plugin you like. For example, let's start with Fisher list. It will list basically the list of plugins that are currently installed. And obviously we have nothing right now. You can go for a crazy prompt uh, like uh, the one called Tide. And the way you would install it is by doing something like this. And once you're done, that's it. You can now choose uh, whatever you want. I'm gonna go for the lean option and I'm gonna go for the 16 color version as well as the uh, maybe the 24 hour format. Yeah, 24 hour format is cool. And then I'm going to go for a one line option and I'm gonna also keep it compact. Let's go for many icons. Let's see how it looks like. And the last one is two and we are going to override the configuration right now. It's installing all the necessary plugins and we're done. That's it, this is how our new prompt looks like. Uh, let's go to some uh, specific uh, repository and as you can see here, we're already in the repository. The prompt looks nice. It's showing us the default branch as well as some other uh, information about you know the folder we are in. Now, the last thing we are going to do, obviously these uh, nice icons and whatever do not come by default off the shelf with your environment you might need to install something called nerd fonts this is the website these are awesome font libraries just pick the font that you like the most and i'm going to show you right now how to install one of them first of all i need to install a package called font config uh, because this will allow me to manage my fonts on uh, ubuntu in this case then i am going to uh, create a new directory called dot fonts for this particular user obviously you don't want to override the fonts for your entire system and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the nerd fonts uh, website we're going to download the font uh, package or grab the link for the font package we want my favorite font is uh, nv code r now once we grab the uh, font for the link let's go to our fonts folder which we just created then we're going to do a wget and we're going to paste url and then we're just going to unzip nv code sorry code r into this folder and then we're gonna list to make sure that all of these files are there we're gonna remove the uh, zip file the md files as well and that's pretty much it the last thing we want to do is to install these fonts with fc cache fv and we are done and this is how you are going to get the nice icons in your environment that's it. That's all I want to show you today. These are just some options to give you inspiration. Obviously, you don't need to follow these exact same steps. Just I'm opening your eyes to what is out there and how much you can customize your shell to your, you know, your liking to increase your productivity. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And I will catch you next time.